Hello, welcome back to the Transfer Portal CFB presented by No Contact CFB. We're doing draft coverage. Draft dogs. It's back. <laughs> it's combine week. It's combine yes. week. It is. That's interesting. If you care about that, I don't know. Uh, people care about it. It's important. Running in a straight line is pretty important too, though, right? Yeah. Ooh. Also turning. Turning, Yeah. Yeah, turn left like that. NASCAR drivers, those NASCAR drivers, sorry, improper grammar. Uh, Matthew is with me. Hello, Matthew. Hello. Hi, Liam. Matthew's very hyped for the combine. I'm excited about the combine. I love betting on the combine and losing money. It's my favorite thing that, to do. Maybe maybe that's a segment that we should have done. We should have, since Underdog just went full degenerate with the 40-yard dash times. We should have just <laughs> given out plays there. Maybe. We talk about it. I, yeah. I, I know my plays. Oh my gosh. Okay. We're we're gonna start before we truly like dive into you know some 40 times and risers and all that. We're gonna start with something fun and we would like to kind of predict things here, little player team fits. I think we have five each. We're just gonna share our favorite player team fits and please comment below or tweet at us what your favorite player team fits are and let's get started, Matthew. All right, first, I have uh, an edge out of Iowa. I have Lucas Van Ness to the Lions. Pure kneecap biter. Oh like, he doesn't, do, doesn't beat you with any tricks. He's just looking to go straight through your tackle, tackle soul and knock him down all the way to the quarterback. Dan Campbell's going to love him. If I, I think he probably goes to the Packers at 15, but if he gets past that to 18, I think, I think the Lions are going to take a hard look at him. See, because I also have, like, a, a super Dan Campbell guy, and that's Trenton Simpson to the Lions. I think that he's a perfect fit for their second first rounder. Maybe he falls and they could get him with, with their second rounder, but he is screams Dan Campbell to me, and that defense needs a lot of help. They need a lot of help. They need a guy that could go out there and be a supremely versatile player. Why not Trenton Simpson? Why not the queen chess piece? He could do it all. I think he fits perfectly for Dan Campbell, what they're trying to build. Just add a superb corner to, please. Uh, if you, if you sneak, sneak peek, if you want to look at Liam's Twitter a couple of days ago, me, him, and one of our friends, Eric, did a did a little mock draft for two rounds. And we I think Lions have three picks in the first two rounds, and all of them were defense for us. So they're they're yeah. building through the defense over there. Indeed. Who's that second fit for Matt? All right, so now I'm going to look at a team that needs just a ton of wide receiver help, just l- literally anything. Uh, we don't know who's going to be throwing them the ball because we don't know where Lamar's going to play, but I, I think A.T. Perry to the Ravens would be a really interesting fit. It's just, they they need someone who could win a jump ball or win downfield, and they don't have that person on the roster. And I think the, the one of the towers out there at 6'5 out of Wake Forest, I think A.T. Perry would help them a lot in the deep areas of the field. Dude, it's just, it's it's just never a good feeling hearing that one of your favorite receivers in the class is going to Baltimore. <laughs> it, 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 it's it's a gut punch. I'm punching like it's terrible. It's terrible, Matt. Why would you say that? Because they need help. They need anything. Yes, they do. Um, what well, Jalen Cropper to the Chargers is one that I'm infatuated with. And actually, let me look this up on the tweeters and see if any other steam is coming through on this. Because I'm proud to say, I have the first ever Jalen Cropper, Justin Herbert, and Jalen Cropper Chargers tweets out there. Nobody beat me to it. Um, it looks like one other person is on the train at Chargers Rage. Good job, man. I think Jalen <laughs> Cropper is the ideal the ideal candidate for a Chargers receiver pick on day day three. I think it'll be a fourth round pick. I think you absolutely take that dart and you fire on him. He's a surgical route runner who wins with great pace, really good speed. He separates well. He's nasty after the catch. I don't see how he doesn't get to L.A. and be an impact piece from day one, regardless of if they take another seer before him. I think Cropper finds his way on the field early. 
he'd be a great piece for Justin Herbert. And guess what? Whether people realize it or not, Mike Williams is nearing 30. That dude's old. He's hurt often. And Ken Allen's always hurt as well. Like, they just got to find some some youth in the receiver room. I would draft two this year. Yeah, because honestly, I think one of those guys is gone this year. I don't think Keenan and Mike are both on the roster at the start of the season. Mm-hmm. I think one of them is either traded or cut for salary. So I do I do think they need to add at least one wide receiver early and then probably another one in the mid to late rounds. Who you got, number three? We're, we're going to go with another receiver. We're on a little receiver train here. Uh, uh, One of my favorite receivers in the class, Uh, who's not a day one pick, probably a late day three or late day two, early day three guy. Marvin Mims, mm-hmm. I, I like him. I like him going to the Chiefs. The the Chiefs have a That's lot of cheating. It's literally cheating. It's not cheating. I like this receiver to go to the Chiefs. He he's he'd be a good fit for them. They 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 have a lot of inside guys. I I think he he gives them for even though he he doesn't have the ideal size of an outside deep ball guy, he plays really well in the deep areas of the field because he high points really well and he and he uh, he has great really good closing speed to get to ball. I, he'd fit well. He'd be he'd be Patrick Mahomes' favorite target in three years when Travis Kelsey retires. All right, Liam Blutman also sent the receiver to the Chiefs, and that's Zay Flowers. Yes, that's they cheating. Have. Yeah, that's it is cheating. cheating. It is cheating. It wouldn't be fair if Zay Flowers is cooking with Mahomes and Andy Reid. It, it just that fit is so disgusting to think about. And yes, they have Sky and Tony and everything, and Lee. I mean, these guys have slot receivers and slot receivers and slot receivers. But Zay Flowers could play on the outside a good bit, and he finds ways to take top over a de- to take the top off of a defense and beat people deep with really good route running. With with his uh, his double move is extremely good. I think he would thrive in that. I just think he would thrive in Kansas State, like I heard there would, and he'd be nasty in the red zone too, and all these trick plays and fun packages that they do. Zay would thrive. So yeah, I cheated. So what? Uh, uh- a really common comp I've seen for Zay so far is Tyler Lockett. And I, if you imagine Tyler Lockett in the Chiefs offense, it's just something that would work really well. So I, it, it is a really good fit. It's still cheating, though. So I see fan. Zay Flowers as Zay Flowers. I see Zay Flowers as uh, Jolteon. Oh, okay. I like that. I like that. Okay. Uh, my next fit is a guy we're almost certainly going to talk about later. Uh, Devin Achain out of A&M. Uh, I just because we've seen it work well for them last year and just in history before in the 49er <laughs> Shanahan style offense. Oh. I, I think a chain to the Dolphins would be a really good fit because obviously they had Mostert there last year. He was hurt a lot of the year, but Mostert had one of his best years of the last few years. And if you just imagine what 32 year old Mostert can do, multiply that by two or three and throw a chain in there and he's going to have a really good feel, feel out there at Miami. Hmm. That's uh, I like that a lot. Well, you have Pokemon Kong. Uh, who's the <laughs> fastest Pokemon? <laughs> Jolteon has really high speed. But I don't think he's the fastest. Hold on, uh, you do your guys. I'll follow. We have the fastest base speed Pokemon. Uh, okay, Jordan Addison to the Jaguars. I've been all over since I was mocking them seventh overall to Jacksonville back when Jacksonville was projected to pick in the top 10. And yeah, I actually do have a Pokemon comp for him that I've made plenty of times before. Jordan Addison just flies on the field and his quickness is crazy. He's evasive. He's like Pikachu after using double team a time or two. This guy is as quick as they come. And I don't think people are cherishing this receiver class enough. I don't think people are giving it the respect it deserves at the top. I've seen a lot of, a lot of, ludicrous slander saying things like Jordan Addison when you uh, uh have been talked about highly last year like there's no way that he was a better prospect there's no way he's a better prospect than John Dotson and and all this garbage y'all are tripping I think that this is prospect fatigue because Jordan Addison has been in the limelight for a good bit I I, I understand I guess he didn't have the explosive elite season that we would hope for at SC, but injuries happen. That receiver room was so deep as well. Can okay, we throw the ball to whoever. I, I'm sorry. I have to go into the fit. 
Jordan Addison with Trevor Lawrence. Just think of the targets that Addison would amass and what he would be able to do with it after the catch, what he would be able to do to just catch a Trevor Lawrence deep ball, help him out in the short pass game in the in the red zone inside the 10. Like I don't I Jordan Addison just gets a bad rap, and I don't understand that he's gonna be a star. A star. It's it, and I think it's probably something that's going to happen similarly with well, it already kind of ha- has happened with JSM this year, and maybe it'll even happen with Marv next year. Just if you win that Belitnikov before your last year and you don't win in your third year, it's going to feel like a down year because you're the best receiver in the country your, your sophomore year yeah. than you weren't technically your junior year. So it's going to feel like a down year. So people are like, ah, he wasn't as good. He kind of fell off. But he was still really good. He he was injured a little bit. When he was on the field, he was pretty much untouchable again. Yeah, he. And I think that's a really good word. Is untouchable. Like his movement is. It, it, I don't really have a word for it. his movement. Is really just jaw dropping. It's breathtaking. And I don't think people respect this guy enough. Go look at what he did with Kane picking up pit in that bullet in the coffee year, and just drool over these contested catches that he's making, the separation that he's. That that he that he's uh creating, the hands are elite. Like I don't know, people are overthinking this stuff. That guy should be a top ten pick, in my opinion. Oh, uh, uh, so anyway, Achain's Aerodactyl because he's he's okay. he, fly, he flies like when he's that. running. Like uh, my last fit, we're, we're, we we've been talking about some some guys on the outside, some defensive guys. I'm I'm going to the trenches now. I, I like Andrew Voorhees guard. I like him going to the Eagles. So the Eagles are losing Isaac Samalo this year. Uh, I'm an Eagles fan, so I know a lot about what's happening there. They're losing Isaac Samalo this year, and I think Voorhees is a really good fit into their zone running scheme. He, he's 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 a really good mover at guard, and I think he'd fit very well in their offensive line because his like one issue is normally he gets beat by power, and I think they have a lot of things to help combat that. Mm-hmm. No Pokemon comp here. Uh, he's Miltank. Oh, gross. Because when Miltank when Miltank gets downhill and rumbling, you don't want to get in its way. When Miltank's on a rollout, he is it's an issue. Okay, I I almost went Zach Evans to the Chargers, and I kind of backed off it, and I went for kind of a Liam deep sleeper to the Falcons because they desperately need a an absolute makeover in the pass rushing department. So I think they're going to draft multiple edge rushers. I think. B.J. Thompson should be seriously considered out of Stephen F. Austin. A combine snub, I don't get that. Uh, Maybe they feared that B.J. Thompson was going to be way too athletic and blow the combine up and steal everyone's spotlight. It doesn't make sense that he didn't get a combine invite. He wins. Look, his his athletic background is ridiculous. He basically has played every single position on the football field. He was a really good tight end in high school. You know, safety receiver linebacker edge in the in the trenches like he did all he played baseball and literally everything man um he's just so fast his speed off the edge is ridiculous i think he's got a few good early solid pass rushing moves that like he's just worthy of an investment. I thought with a strong combine, he could have been a late third rounder, and now we're not going to know that. You get him on the fourth or fifth round, you potentially is hit a gold mine, and you've got a really, really good player in BJ Thompson that's going to produce for the next few years. Uh, I, I, I like I just don't get why I didn't get combine is why I, I love the thought of him in that rebuilt Atlanta pass rush department, though. The, co- the combine really needs to extend. Like, make it four days if you have to. There's so many guys that don't get a chance that deserve the chance. The the amount of like quality snubs that there are, like Jay and Woodby comes to mind. Carl Brooks comes to mind. Carl Brooks is being touted by many as like a top 65 player in the class, and he ain't at the combine. Make it make sense. I know we have to give spots to punters and kickers and log snappers and everything, but let's also just think about how many quarterbacks go there and don't actually participate in much, or how many highly talented players like Jalen Carter go there and don't train or, or work out and just interview. Like that's clogging the spot, that's stealing a chance from another kid in their family's life's changing in, in unheard of ways. Like it's ridiculous, it's gross. I don't understand it. Uh, that part of why I, you know, well, 
I don't know. Draft processes are a real love hate thing, and this is just the part that I absolutely hate and despise. Too many guys that that need this opportunity that don't get it for zero reason. Yeah. So, what will change a lot of people's lives is three digits after they run the forty. I don't care about the forty yard dash. I only care about a, a ridiculous time that's going to change someone's life, like it did for. Um, I I want to say Pacheco because he went seventh round, but the forty I can't think of his name. Why well, can't I think of his name? It's a Liam what guy position? too. I I had it queued up. I just can't think. That's tough. What position? Oh, P- I mean, okay, Pierre Strong kind of because he got so much hype after running the forty. Oh, it's just stuff like that. So uh, yeah, forty is just super important. Christian Watson, I guess you could say too. I mean, there's a bunch of people. John Ross, top ten. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's forty's massive. It doesn't. Rug, rug, rugs going first over CD. Yeah, and, and yeah, I don't know. Like I talked to Zay Flowers about this. He was like, "Dude, I don't care about the forty. If I'm gonna run as fast as I need to, to show these people up and show them what I'm about and show them what speed I got." But this doesn't correlate to playing football at all. Like I ain't running a straight line ever. He's right. So yeah, straight line guys. Five guys to look out for from each of us. Matt, you're on the clock. Uh, I'm going to go with a few obvious ones early. Uh, Jalen Hyatt, uh, Blitnik, Blitnikoff this year. It, he, it's easy. It's easy. Yeah, but he's he's going to run. He has a chance to run in the four twos. He, he's definitely running in the mid to low four threes. I, he's going to be a burner out there. If if he runs in the four twos, he's almost certainly going to be the first receiver off the board. Whether he deserves to be or not, he probably will be if he runs in the four twos. Mm. So I think an obvious one is Princeton's Andre Yeshivas, who mm. placed like fourth in the NCAA National Championship for the 60-meter dash or whatever, or it's called, not the track and field guy, sorry. <laughs> but Yeshivas did that. He's also been clocked in at 22.2 miles per hour. That's fun. This is a guy that's getting a lot of, look, I hate comps, but... There's a lot of similar vibes here to Christian Watson, people are saying, and Watson blew it up at the 40-yard dash. We've seen him excel with the speed in the NFL now with the Packers. I, I ain't comping him to Watson because that's not why I do, but Ieshivas is going to run a super fast 40, and people are going to fall in love with him after, and they're going to get straight to the tape and start watching him. So that's a big 40 time for Andre coming up. All right. No, no, another track and field guy. A lot of the 40 guys are going to be track and field guys just yeah. because so much of your time is going to be dependent on getting that fast start. Dude, that's most of what is necessary to run a good 40 time. So the, uh, another obvious one, Devin Achain, we talked about him earlier. He ran 10 one in the hundred, hundred meter dash for, at a and in the college championships. He's a burner, absolute elite straight line speed. He's, if I had to pick someone that was going to run the fastest time, it would probably be Ashane for me. I there's a few guys Hyatt maybe could catch him. There's a few guys at corner maybe, but I I if you had to pick a guy, he's probably this is the first one. Yeah, so I'm going Kean Mitchell next from East Carolina, who I've been on record to as saying if he stayed, I think he's a top three running back in the 2024 class. He's been clocked in at 22.6 miles an hour. He's a blur. There's no there's no other way to put it. And his movement's ridiculous and everything. He's going to be a stud running back in the NFL, and a big-time 40-yard dash is going to help him like get on the map for a lot of people that don't know about this East Carolina running back that's flown under the radar all season and now all draft process so far. Kia Mitchell's going to run a very fast time. Uh, I I hate. I think he could run the fastest time of any running back. I really do. He is he gonna bring the combine record back to Eastern Carolina where it belongs? I don't know. T- take take it from John Ross. Bring it back to Eastern Carolina, like like East CJ Carolina did. man. And the Eastern put some respect on the Pirates. Arg, arg. Not doing the pirate joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, my next guy, he, he, he won't be run be running the fastest time out there, but I think it's going to be one of the most interesting just because a person he's commonly comp to didn't run back in the day, Malik Cunningham out of Louisville. Obviously mm. we never, we never did get to see what Lamar ran coming out because of all the running back talk, but now 
with how good we've seen running quarterbacks can be in the NFL with Justin Fields, Hurst, Cunningham, et cetera, et cetera, uh, Lamar, et cetera, et cetera. Cunningham's going to be able to run. I think there's a chance he runs low, low four fours, maybe four threes. He's not quite as straight line fast as Lamar was, but he's still crazy athletic. He's going to do really good in the, in the, da, da, da. The shuttle as well, and the three cone drill. He's really a, a fluid mover, so he thinks he's gonna do really good, good wear, and he's gonna have be having a really interesting forty time to see. Yeah, so there's what like three hundred nineteen players at the combine. Who knows how many of those are actually going to be participating? I think I'm going to say a name that nobody's expecting. Uh, like I, I mean, it's tough because there's like three hundred nineteen names, but Jason Brownlee from Southern Miss. I think he's gonna like this is a this is what we're talking about when we're saying that this stuff changes lives. Three digits here could change this guy's life. He has been he's an East Mississippi Community College product. Yeah, people familiar with that school? No biggie. I learned about I I just wrote an article about Brownlee the other day, and I learned about him back in 2020 because I started NCAA 14 dynasty with updated rosters with <laughs> Southern Miss. I saw he was in high 90s in speed. This was before he even played down FBS ball, moved him straight up the depth chart, was throwing them bombs there. He could catch bombs out here in real life too. It's, the, the 40s big for him, the combine is big for him because people don't really know about what the six foot two Juco like talent has to offer. And, and, and like I wrote about, so I won't go into that. Check out the article if you'd like to learn a little bit more about Jason Brownlee and his traits and everything. But I'm not saying, I don't know. I Like, it's hard for me to predict times. I think he's going to run a really fast time, though, that's going to be impressive, and people are going to start to take notice. And that that's when the sleeper starts to, you know, the caterpillar and the evolution to the butterfly, like it's happening. All right. My next guy is another fairly slept on, not quite as slept on, but a fairly slept on receiver, Trey Palmer out of Nebraska, mm. uh, form, formerly of LSU, transferred this this senior year, had a big year, had over 1,000 yards. Uh, he in, in high school, he was the 200-meter dash champion of the state of Louisiana all four years. And at, at, at the start of his junior season at LSU, he ran a 4.38 in the 40. I think he's there's a chance he runs better than that here. He's a really good deep ball receiver, runs really well. I think he's going to be able to put – He right now he's probably firmly a day three guy. He runs a really good number here. He can get to day two. Hmm. So I'm going to go with a defensive player next. I'm going to go with Cincinnati's Ivan Pace Jr., who I'm very high on. I think that, you know, people are kind of looking at him and see his size and kind of get turned off, whatever. Ivan Pace Jr. is really strong. And he's going to run, like, I don't know. He's just played such a good brand of football. And, and he's been super productive. And the 40s going to be big for him. Uh, at the Senior Bowl, he clocked in at 20.58 miles per hour. Excited to see what pace Jr. runs. And it's going to be going to be a big week for him. My last guy is a defensive guy as well. I have uh, – there's a lot of the – corners or in the first round that could run really well and put their name on the board. My, the one I'm going to go with is going to be Christian Gonzalez out of Oregon, really good uh, size, size speed guy. Uh, he again, run, ran, ran really well. What, what, what was he clocked at? He clocked at 23.3 at the off season of the ducks miles per hour. So he, he can, he can fly. If he gets a good start, he can put up a really good time. And I, it, it what whichever guy puts up the best time among either him, Porter, or Cam Smith relative to the, what they're expected to do, that's probably the corner that'll go first. They, they, they're they're all really good. I, I think Christian Gonzalez could, would be my guy to have the best time here. So I think it's only right to end this with a TCU player as that team encompass the just identity of quickness. Flashiness, burst, explosiveness, strap, speed. Darius Davis. This guy's clocked in at 22.7 miles per hour in game. And what the, the value that he's going to bring in the NFL, special teams, part returning, kick returning. And then, yeah, he'll get a little dose of catching the ball here or there, maybe getting a hand off to him and just running with that pure speed and quickness. He could put up a number in the four twos. He really can. So I'd look out for Darius Davis to. 
just Darius Davis to me is like the guy who runs a super fast 40 and gets the reactions from the booth. That's just like, wow. Wow. And then that's it. And it's like, pay like that young man or something. They're, they're talking about someone else entirely. And they see the number pops up. Wait, who is that? Yeah. That yes, that that's, that's what I think will happen. So yeah, there's our guys for uh, 40 times. Lastly, we're going to be looking at some risers, some guys that we think could just have good combines in general. Mm-hmm. My first guy is going to be Riley Moss, who had the fastest speed by any defender at the Senior Bowl. Uh, former state champ in 110-meter hurdles. Really good deep speed guy, and he's also a good change of direction. His, 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 his hips flip really well when he's tracking a deep ball. I think he's a guy that could rise a lot. I think he could become a second-round pick if he puts up a really good week out here. Oh, okay. Big Riley Moss. I'm going to go with Tucker Kraft, tight end from South Dakota State, as, as I've been very vocal about, whether it's in the public or in a Discord call with mad friends. The tight ends, it, it just the value of take, uh, I just can't see three or four going in the first round. It doesn't make sense to me. The tight end class is super deep. The combine presents an opportunity for a guy like Tucker Kraft to show people, yo, why are you going to take this tie in on the first round when you could get me in the early third. Like I'm here, I'm him. He's a very just stout athlete that could do it all. You're going to, I believe former baseball player too. You're going to see a lot of, if I'm wrong on that though, it's so bad. I'm pretty sure he played baseball. I'm pretty sure he told us that, but yeah, Tucker Kraft is going to have a really strong week. And this is, this is a big opportunity for an FCS tight end that, He's kind of being pushed aside right now because of the main four. But if you're going to give me the choice of Darnell Washington or Tucker Kraft at the next level, please give me the Jackrabbit. And I don't think twice about it. Jackrabbit's tight end, historically good in the NFL. We love Dallas Goddard in this household. Hello. All right. Uh, I have a lot of corners here for some reason. I didn't realize. Actually, well, no, no, I don't have another corner. Here's the safety. Uh, Ke- Kelly Ringo out of Georgia. We've talked about it at length. I think Liam it, it was one of the first people to be on board of saying if he moves to safety, he could he could be really good. An elite, elite size speed guy. He's gonna put up freaky straight lines, uh, spike speed speed size numbers. Also has really good burst, so he'll be he'll be good in the vert, good in the long jump. Uh, he's brought he he could solidify himself as a first rounder with this right now he's fringe for second he has if he puts up the week we all expect him to as one of the freaky athletes in that georgia defense of a uh, group of freaky athletes uh he he should have a really good week yeah kelly ringo is a guy that wait i'm not tripping you said ringo right yeah Okay, I don't know why I just second guessed that. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, okay, so Ringo's just the guy that was being mocked in the top 10 for the longest time and being talked about as one of the best prospects in the class for the longest time. And maybe it's a bit of prospect fatigue and he's just kind of falling off. But, you know, I, I don't know. I just think he's better at safety. But, yeah, a big athletic week for him is going to solidify him as a first-rounder, and I do expect him to go out there and, like, show that he is worthy of being a first-round pick. It's just I think his skill set fits better for safety. But, oh, well. Next up, I'm going to go with J.L. Skinner, Matt. Woo! Talk, uh, J.L. Skinner is just in – Golly, man. J.L. Skinner is going to put up just very good numbers across the board. An athletic specimen was he six foot four, and he's a daunting presence on the field. It's one of the safeties that there's not, there's really not many safeties that are being talked about so highly in this class. I, Antonio Johnson gets a lot of love. You got to look elsewhere outside of safety one. Maybe it's maybe, maybe J.L. Skinner's the second best safety in class. I believe so. I think he's going to be a feared DB in the NFL for years to come and big week at the combine is going to help. He's going to run a good 40. He's going to bench press a good bit. He's going to do all the drills and stuff. It's going to be a good week. He should be the first safety on the board, which we, we've talked about a lot in, 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 in these spaces. Uh, he's been my number one safety for the last two years. I, I love JL scared what he did at Boise State. Indeed you do. 
Uh, all right, my last DB here, uh, Jalen Jones at AM is the guy I would pick. Like, he's probably at he's 6'2, 205. He's one of the best change of direction movement guys in the class at 6'2, 205. He's really, really fluid. He like turns and snaps on the ball well. He turns and runs with the ball. He's he's he has decent speed, but I think where he's really gonna pop is gonna be three cone drill. And the shuttle, I think he's going to put up really good numbers there and and move himself up the board here. Mm-hmm. So for me, I, I just got to say, like, South Carolina is just sneaky good at putting out really good cornerbacks. I don't think they can, like, I don't think people really, really realize how good of a pipeline they've got to the FL cornerback. Cam Smith, I think, is the best corner in the class. His teammate, Darius Rush, is super slept on, and he's going to have a massive leak at the combine. He's going to rise. I think that this guy is going to be a second-round pick. I would not be surprised one bit if after the combine we're talking about Darius Rush as a potential late first-round pick. Guess what he did at the Senior Bowl? 21.65 miles an hour he was clocked in at. He is one of the fastest corners in the class, Six foot two. And he just plays such a great brand of of football. He's aggressive. He's he's an alpha dog. I just love South Carolina corners. He's got really good closing speed and everything and range. Like I I don't know. He brings special teams value. He's everything that I want in a in a cornerback that I'm taking at the end of the first or early second. Like I'm all in on Darius Rush, and I think he's gonna have a a, a silly good week at the combine. I, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I was a little upset. I saw him on your list because he was one of the guys that was going to be my first guys for combine riser or 40 time. He He's a really good athlete. And I agree is they They could have very easily have two corners taken in the first round. Yeah. He's going to, he's going to shoot up boards. He's going to measure in really well too. Yeah. Another guy that's going to measure in really well and put up just freaky athletic numbers is Jalen Duncan out of Maryland. Probably Mm. the most athletic tackle in the class. And he's at 6'6", 300. So the only issue issue with him is the arms are a little short, which is weird for a guy that's so big. But outside of that, I think he's going to put up really good numbers everywhere else. Really good mover in space, really good straight, straight line speed for a tackle, obviously. But very athletic if he if he can like figure out his technique a little bit he's a little raw in terms of technique he's kind of he's going to be a really good tackle in the nfl hmm. so i'm gonna go with uh caleb murphy at dresser from ferris state who i spoke with at the shrine bowl I think he had a very very good week there but quiet what can you do uh he can't control that he can control a lot of things with a really good combine though this week and you know, I don't know what drills he's going to excel in, but this is a guy that I think this is that opportunity to for a Ferris State kid to go out there and show people, I I can do this. I can play with the best of them. Look at me like I'm a day two pick, like a round three pick. Invest in me there. I think Caleb Murphy with the big week, with, with a strong week, is going to show that I'm one of the – like the edge – Russian class is so nasty, man. It's so deep. so deep. I've talked about BJ Thompson. I've talked about Caleb Murphy. These are two guys that aren't really talked about at all. They're not looked upon in this deep edge rushing class. Uh, uh, these guys are freaks, though. Like, Caleb Murphy is one of the most productive players in his school's history. I think he had 26 and a half sacks last year or something ridiculous. Caleb Murphy's going to shoot up boards. Watch, watch, watch. If we're going to talk about freak, it's only right we talk about the guy that was number one on Bruce Feldman's freaks list coming to last year. Okay. That's Mozzie Smith out of Michigan. 6'3", 337 pounds, benches 550, also ran a four four one shuttle, and he ran a six nine five cone time at the at, for Michigan, which would have been the best time by, like, multiple tenths of a second of defensive tackle last year. Oh, and he also vertical jumps 33 inches. Just a freakish athlete for his size. He's he's going to put up a big number, especially with Jalen Carter not participating in drills now that we know. He's, he's, he has the potential to rise a lot in that interior defensive line class. 
So first off, I kind of just want to highlight a few other guys. Uh, Garrett Williams and Lance Boykin at cornerback, I think are two guys that you need to keep like to to look out for really with good combines that could rise them up. But man, I'd be an idiot if I didn't bring up Eli Ricks right here, dude. This is his time to prove that everybody has been disrespecting him and and just I, I, again, I think if this guy stayed at LSU, he would have been an easy surefire top ten pick this year. He is comfortably. Uh, I think I have him CB3 right now behind Cam Smith, behind Devin Witherspoon. I'm super high on Eli Ricks. I love him as a first-round pick. I think he could end up in the top 20. Real Analytics on Twitter just put out a little combine preview for corners. Projected top performers using their in-game athleticism score. Eli Ricks was number one with a 99.2. That's a 99.2 athleticism score out of 100. The Combine, we're testing athleticism. Eli Ricks is going to have a week, and people are going to realize, oh, Eli Ricks really is that dude. It, it was just an unfortunate situation, Alabama. I need to hop back in on the Eli Ricks bandwagon and act like I've been a fan forever. Yeah. He just with what happened to him this year, I, I think this is his easiest spot to make a good impression. Yeah, well, if I'm Eli Ricks, I'm not even kid. My Sunday night football intro, I don't, even th- I don't even think I say a college, or I just say LSU. I don't even mention Alabama. Could, could be like Jordan Mailata. He says Jeff Stoutland University. It, it, I don't know. There, there's a lot of good ones. Uh, BJ Thompson told me for his Sunday night football intro, he's just going to make sure he says, I'm a freak athlete. <laughs> and again, Combine missed out on having BJ Thompson. They they whiffed. Uh, what we got next? Guys to keep an eye on. We've got three each. So you you just said that BJ said he's going to be a freak athlete. I'm going to talk about a guy whose Twitter name is literally The Freak. That's his at on Twitter. That's Owen Popo out of Auburn. Mm. He's a, he, probably the best athlete in terms of the linebacker position. Uh, clocked at a 4-3-2-40. Uh, at, at Auburn at, while also having a 40 inch vert and bench pressing four four seventy five, 75 just built really well is, is just it, at linebacker like and sideline to sideline speeds one of the two things you just really can't teach and I think he's going to interview really well as well he's he, he's been the the captain of Auburn's defense for the last two years so he has leadership skills I think he's going to interview really well and test really well so I think this is a good spot for him to to make a really good impression so there's 50 wide receivers going to the combine. There's one from the conference USA, and that's Grant Dubose, who I'm such a big fan of. And it is, again, a common theme with me as always. It's a guy that's not getting the love that he deserves. Easy guy that I'm going to be rooting for. Dealt with a lot in his life. 2020 was crazy for him. He was working three jobs. They didn't know where he was going to be. They didn't know if he, his football career was even going to continue. Uh, oh, man. He got to Charlotte in 2021, the summer, and that was because the backup QB, James Foster, invited him out and said, like, yo, try out for us. Just see. Just see what you could do. So he went from Miles College to not playing anywhere, working three jobs in 2020, to getting to Charlotte on a complete fluke. Like, Charlotte wasn't looking at him. This was straight up quarterback on a team that knows him from high school is like, hey, you ain't playing ball. Come try out for us. Makes the team, torches Duke in the season opener. Career has been magnificent since then. Uh, This is a guy, he's just so easy to root for, and these are the kind of weeks that is really the only reason why I care about the combine, because it could change a young man's life and the whole family's life. Grant DuBose, please look out for him. He's the one wide receiver that's there from the conference USA. It's going to be a good ball player. I got another group of five receiver for you. Uh, Someone that's going to be really interesting because he's going to measure really poorly. He's, he's, he's a small dude. He's not very big, but he's all, he's also freakishly athletic. And that's tank Mm -hmm. Dell out of Houston. Don't call him Nathaniel people. 
he he's gonna people are gonna see his height weight numbers and be turned off of him. He's in the first percentile of weight in term in terms of wide receivers, but he's just such a good mover, so good with the ball in his hands, so really good down the field. He, if if he gets a shot, just let draft him, put be, have him be a gadget guy for a year if you want, to, but let him earn those wide receiver snaps. He's gonna do really well. He's so productive over the last two years. What has what probably the top three at least yards in, in terms of wide receivers in college over the last two years, just so productive. If he gets a chance, I, I think he, he'll be able to do really well in the NFL. So I'm going to go with back to the tight end well, because again, you're this is this is the opportunity for a lot of people to start looking at tight ends out again. This is what happens every year. There's a few tight ends that are talked about the top and like that's it. And then you get to the combine and, and wow, oddly enough, this position that is so successfully based off of traits and athletic scores and all this and that, and day three picks and all all in round three, like this is where the tie ends shine. We saw it last year with Likely, with Oconquo, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of guys I'm looking at this year. Luke Schoonmaker's one of them, but Sam Laporta is going to be a, 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 a gargantuan week. For Sam Laporta, look at the adjective there, gargantuan. <laughs> he has a big opportunity. Okay, I went right straight back to big opportunity. But, yeah, I don't know. This is, again, just another chance for a guy in the tight end class to show people why take another tie in the first round when you get the round three or round four. I'm going to produce for years to come. I embody what an NFL tight end is. Come from TEU, Iowa, like, Sam Laporta, he's going to impress a lot of people this week for sure. We saw, he was really the only threat on the Iowa offense. We saw how important yeah. he was in the, in, the, in, in the last game he didn't play. He's he he, he could be really good as as a day three guy or early I, late day two guy. I, I think he's a surefire pro. Not to like make you snipe him from me in fantasy, but I think Laporta is surefire. Uh, my last guy is just another elite athlete here. Uh, Keon White out of Georgia Tech. Uh, he's a guy that's been flying up boards and, and, and power rankings over the last couple, couple weeks and months. Uh, and I, I think he's athletic enough that he will, he'll be able to put up even more, even go up even more here. It just really really good size speed numbers almost 300 pounds but has hit 21 miles an hour has done 38 reps of 225 on the bench press for jump 32 inches just uh he's a little bit of an older prospect but i think just in terms of what he can do on the field he's uh, uh, feels like a really safe bet at the edge rusher class if you're looking at the at, at the later picks yeah i'm surprised that he's risen so high with how you know old he is so I'm going to end this with a guy that loves Power Rangers, former two-star prospect, former wide receiver that played both receiver and linebacker in 2019 at Nevada, transferred to Washington State. Life has been good since then. It's Day and Henley out of Wazoo. Again, it's just I, he was a two-star prospect. He was playing wide receiver and now he's like a, a strong week at the combine away from being maybe a second round pick. That's crazy to think about. He he's he, he brings special teams value to two hundred what two two thirty. He's a, a supremely good athlete. Day and Henley is going to have one of those weeks again. A lot of uh, front offices writing his name down, just writing that name down. He's it probably going to kill it in interviews, too. I like Dan Henley a ton. He's not all our guys. Line. Yeah, those are our guys. I and mean, he's one of the better linebackers in the class. People, people want to talk about? It? Just saying, just saying. Uh, yeah, but that's all our guys, man. Kind of sad. That's it. We, we love our guys, so. though. That was fun. Yeah, our guys. Woo. Uh, please comment below some of your guys. Tweet them at us. Tweet who you think's got big combines. 
I guess bad combines, shoot up boards, shoot down boards, all that fun stuff, 40 times to look out for bench press, all that fun stuff. Who's going to throw dots on the field too? Jake Hayner, please show him that rocket. Cody Mauk, run a fast 40. Let the ginger flow fly. Give us your favorite 10-yard shuttle, guys. Yeah. And the, it was just, I don't know. Combine's cool and all. Just, just have fun with it. And, and don't, honestly, don't overinvest in it, I would say, from, like, writing people off. But hmm. Also, don't use the combine to, like, we, we know Devin Ache is super fast. Just because he runs a fast 40 time doesn't mean he's all of a sudden going to be a better running back. We know he's fast. Yeah, and who – I don't know. Who are some of the guys that just had, like, bad math bomb scores last year that went out there and thrived as a rookie? Uh, I don't know. Might be happening. So, hmm. just don't over-invest in it. That's all we're saying. That's fun. That's fun. Uh, yeah, that'll do it for us. Goodbye. Bye-bye. See ya. Thank you. Please like and subscribe. That'll be a lot. Ooh, yeah. Thanks.